Last time in What If Naruto Had Dark Matter Release Part 2, Team 7 embarked on the Kaze Kage rescue mission, utilizing Naruto's gravity-like abilities to expedite travel to the Sand Village, and as they reach there and eventually even pass there, they would travel and eventually confront the Itachi and Kisame clones. The absence of Team Guy necessitates Team 7, accompanied by Granichio, to handle the threat alone. Notably though, in this fight, Naruto swiftly breaking free from Itachi's Genjutsu, while also proving Samehara ineffective against his Dark Matter release, helped them overcome this large hurdle. Kakashi finally unveiling his Mangekyo Sharingan, and employing Kamui against Kisame buys enough time and allows enough damage to be done to lead to the defeat of the clones upon the arrival of Team Guy. During the confrontation with the Akatsuki, Naruto was able to surprise Sasori and Deiro with his gravity-like abilities, enabling him to cease a still-living Gara. And how exactly will that change the events of this arc? To find out, stay tuned for this part of What If Naruto Had Dark Matter Release. Nezuko! Believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury! Shut up, you idiot! Hey! It's me, Goku! Naruto would make off with Gara's still very living body as the shinobi from Iwa lays chase. On the other hand, on the tail of the shinobi from Iwa, Deidara, we have Kakashi. Kakashi doesn't immediately want to use his Mangekyo ability since he does not know the full parameters of how it works. It could be mid-range, it could be long-range, it could only work at a certain speed and so on and so forth. Thus, he would not want to use it immediately, and would result to other jutsu like the fireball and lightning arc to try and catch Deidara off guard to give Naruto enough time to get away. Naruto is making well pace as he had gained an immaculate distance on Deidara and Kakashi, but he's still within Vision's range. This is when Kakashi would decide that he might need to use his Kamui and he would, thus getting rid of one of Deidara's arms. This would result in the Iwa Shinobi finally shifting attention to the copy ninja, and would berate him with many bombs. This would gain Naruto enough of a time period to get away, safely that is, as he would then run to at least an outpost of the sand, where he would then encounter the villagers who had come to see if Gara was safe. He would leave the still awake Gara, or still asleep Gara, with these villagers as he would head back to help his sensei Kakashi. As he arrives back at the battlefield, he sees Kakashi torn up and tired, as he had probably taken many a bombs almost straight on. That's when Naruto has an idea. It's a bird, how about I just unbalance it by making one of its wings too heavy and that's what he does on somewhat of a surprise attack he's able to make one of the wings of the bird affected by gravity to a larger degree as it would tilt throwing data raw off of it only to be hit by an unstable rasengan like jutsu this is the dark matter rasengan he doesn't use it that often since it is highly unstable and it could cause a massive explosion if close to others. This is when the Jutsu goes off. The Jutsu would explode and would shred Deidara, but somehow he's still alive. One leg and no arms left to speak of. He would crawl on the ground using his one last leg to chew up some clay and would do so successfully. And as he does, he says, well this, this is my final explosion, as he hops onto his one final leg, starting to increase in size. Naruto knows exactly what to do. He heavies the pressure on Deidara as he lightens it on himself, grabbing Kakashi, doing the same vice versa, as he starts running. A giant explosion would occur behind them as they get just out of range but not enough out of range, as the explosion is quickly catching up to Naruto. That's when he knows he has to save Kakashi. The explosion will end short, but if he keeps doing this, both of them will get caught up in it. 
as he would then swing throwing Kakashi, letting as much Ninetales chakra leak as possible, seemingly getting consumed by the explosion. He would be in a three-tailed state at this point when he would stand there somewhat unfazed. It looks like it didn't even touch him. And also, what's this dark shadow coming over his body? He would turn around to see a giant fan and a blonde-headed girl accompanying it, saying, Oh, looks like you're okay then, blondie, with Naruto letting the chakra cloak of the nine tails fade away, replying with a, Tamari? You, you saved me. Thanks. With her just saying that within the chakra cloak, he would have probably been fine, but better safe than sorry. Which would then lead to a conversation among the group. We would then discover that Gara had to waken up and then gave the location of the hideout almost exactly to the rest of the villagers and shinobi. Obviously, Itamari being one of these. So, as we then see, Tamari, a pretty injured conqueror, and a bunch of villagers would approach around Naruto with Gara limping along. This would cause somewhat of a celebration as they head back to the cave, where they would find Chio, Sakura, and a lifeless Sasori. They had won this battle. They more than just won it. They succeeded completely. They had brought back Gara alive. Chio has no injuries to speak of, or at least no lethal ones. And both Akatsuki members in this case are actually dead along with some information regarding Orochimaru and Sasuke. So, if this isn't an absolute win, I don't know what would be. As we see Gara being praised by some of the girls from the village, and Naruto being thanked for saving her brother's life, obviously from Tamari, Kankuro would break his pride and do something similar, as they would offer the Leaf Shinobi place in the sand until they recuperate. But this time interrupted by Kakashi, they would say that they need to head back to the Leaf. They have some important information they need to deliver to the Hokage. And thus, that's what they would do. They would head back to the Leaf to inform Tsunade of Orochimaru's whereabouts. On the other hand, we still have the interaction which would normally happen between the members of the Akatsuki being Zetsu and Tobi or Obito, as we this time see... Both Sasori and Data are actually dead, meaning they now have two spots to fill. Which means, thus, that Tobi will probably become a permanent member, and at that he would not follow underneath Data. So who would be the mysterious shinobi replacing Data within the Akatsuki's ranks? Well, for now, that seems unclear, as the shinobi in Team 7 head back to Konoha. Thus, we would see Team 7 returning to Konoha, or at least entering his gates, along with some shinobi from the sand. A combination of Jonin and Genin, presumably squads, who will be participating in the upcoming Chunin exams, since we know that both Shikamaru and Tamari were both big parts of the planning, or had big roles in the planning of this upcoming Chunin exams. But we're not here to go on about that, but instead, we are here to focus on what happens next. Team 7 heading to Konoha's hospital, since Kakashi is pretty injured. Thus, they would leave him there as they report back to Tsunade. They would report to Tsunade that they had found information on Orochimaru's whereabouts and possibly that of Sasuke through a spy of the Akatsuki. All they need to do is find this spy and get the exact location from him. They also inform that he is somewhat of an informant for a member of the Akatsuki that they had previously killed. So, as long as the trail is still fresh, they should be able to fool him and thus get any information needed. This would leave Tsunade in a point of distress as she does not know what to do. Kakashi is currently hospitalized and won't be able to go on a mission for at least some weeks, but on the other hand, if they let this rest for weeks, they can lose this entire lead. 
So she would then assign one of her trusted Anbu in Tenzin or Yamato to Team 7. On the other hand, one of the Leafs' elders would be just as worried, being Donzo. Donzo Shimura would then appoint one of his most loyal agents to Team 7 as well. This being the ever so loved emotionless bastard emo fuck of a discount Sasuke, Sai. Sai would join in on Team 7 and his connection to the group would pretty much be similar to canon as I think the events going up to this arc will most likely unfold near exact since Naruto was just as spontaneous as ever just with a slightly grim aura around him and if he was to get in a fight there would be a bunch of differences. On the other hand, we see them proceeding to do so. The new Team 7, led by Yamato and accompanied by Sai, would make their way to the location where they would meet Sasori's spy. Before meeting Sasori's spy, they would of course camp out at a hot spring reserve type of location, and that would be where Sai and Sakura had their interaction. As per usual, he would call her ugly and so on and so forth, as they would then have a slight bonding moment with Sakura beating the ever-living shit out of Sai afterwards. We would fade away tonight as day comes again, preparing for a fight just in case it happens, since they had no way to confirm that Sasori's spy was actually a spy, but instead some sort of warning mechanism for Orochimaru, they come up with an idea. Yamato himself would be disguised as Sasori, while the rest of them being people like uh, Sai, Naruto, and Sakura would be ready to battle since they need to be hidden regardless. Naruto and Sai would formulate a plan with Naruto using a clone to disguise itself as Sai just in case Sai needs to land some sort of sneak attack since they would expect once again a four man team and if Sai can actually land a secret blow that could be detrimental. So we would see Yamato approaching the bridge where then he would run into whom we believe to be Sasori's spy, which would be revealed to be Kabuto as a single slash comes out of the cloak he was hiding in, cleaving open Yamato's wood transformation as a battle would ensue. At first, it would be a speech from Kabuto as three figures attack from the shadow. Two of them, being Naruto and a clone of Naruto disguised as Sai, would try and use a more stabilized version of the Dark Matter Rasengan, which has a controlled pulse of direct chakra, which, if you want a visual to how that would look, imagine a dark purple-hued Kamehameha away from Dragon Ball, as he would hit almost Kabuto straight on. Kabuto would be able to dodge only his cloak getting caught in a crossfire as he would have abandoned it to cause some sort of distraction. The Rasengan would explode leaving a hole through the bridge when it would be revealed that Orochimaru is present as well. Sakura would not have even come close with her hit as Kabuto would have been easily able to evade it. Also, Naruto's Shadow Clone would be dispelled by Yamato as he scolds Naruto for using a jutsu that two different people like that would not use together, especially people that know of the jutsu's existence, like Kabuto. Thus, it had become apparent that it was a clone. Sasori, for some reason, would not strike from the shadows, which would confuse the group, but they would assume he's looking for an opening. So, from banter of Orochimaru, Naruto's anger seeping more and more, it would be revealed that Naruto had already gone into a third cloak state, and the more he fights Orochimaru and Orochimaru avoids his attack, the more chakra leak becomes apparent, going into a fourth tail, and that's when Yamato knows. His jutsu won't work on Naruto from here on going out, since obviously Jiraiya had said a third tail Naruto had put the hole in his chest. Or at least that's what was relayed by Kakashi to Yamato. 
So he is pretty terrified of what might happen in this situation. On the other hand, Naruto is quickly catching up to Orochimaru in power as more chakra seeps, eventually forcing Orochimaru to use a hidden defensive technique that summons three giant near indestructible doors. Naruto, using a biju bomb at 4th tail level, was able to cleave through two of them and almost destroy the third, as he would finally have enough chakra seeping to go into a 5th tail. As bones start appearing around his arms and on top of his head, he would be able to move much faster than Orochimaru can throw jutsu. This would obviously result in Naruto either completely obliterating Orochimaru, or plot armor being necessary to save him. I feel at this point Kabuto would have leaped into the tree line and had been looking from the shadows, as Naruto's final biju bomb, which I do think he had another one in him, would disrupt Orochimaru's entire body, seemingly destroying it, as a single snake whittles off into the forest, obviously out of vision from the pure destruction caused by the biju bomb. Kabuto, who would receive the snake, would be relieved to see his master still technically being alive and him not needing to go through the gruesome process of removing Sasuke's seal to bring him back. On the other hand, it also becomes apparent that Sai had betrayed the team, as they see Sai leap into the tree line, starting to talk to Kabuto. Only Sakura was able to catch this as she had been thrown near that same tree line after Naruto had attacked her with her trying to calm him down. Naruto is currently losing the chakra cloaks as the target of his rage had been annihilated, at least to his beliefs. This is when both Yamato and Naruto would be informed by Sakura that both Sai's betrayal had become apparent and that they need to follow suit. Sakura would be seen healing herself as she'd be in pretty bad condition and they would barely be able to follow behind, with Kabuto and Sai even getting out of vision by using one of Sai's uh, painted birds or summoned birds. I know it is called the Super Beast Scroll but so on and so forth. They would probably lose our team, leaving them to aimlessly wander around. Also, just a quick reminder, I both am very active on Discord and do do art over on Fiverr. So if you did enjoy any of the art you saw throughout this video, the links to my commission sheet will be down below. And if you want to chat me up over on Discord, the link to my Discord will be down there too. So without further ado, this has been your boy 6. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, night, whatever. Peace.